everyone, and welcome to episode 52 of the Nitty Heather podcast. My name is Heather, and I'm coming to you from Kent, Washington, up here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. This is my podcast where I talk all about my knitting and everything I am working on. I also love to feature amazing makers, whether they are yarn dyers, pattern designers, or any other kind of accessory makers. I always love to give big shout outs to those wonderful people who are adding to the beauty of our fiber community. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoy yourself. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Your support of my little channel really means a lot to me. If you would like to follow me, I am at Nitty Heather on Instagram and I would love to connect with you there. All of the yarn and patterns and accessories I talk about will be listed and linked in the description box below. Today is Saturday, August 27th, 2022, and I have a lot to tell you about, so let's get started. Today I am wearing my Herringbone Cowl by Lauren Osborne. This is a cowl I knit years and years ago out of a skein of some kind of Manos de Uruguay. I'm not quite sure what the fiber content or the weight, I think it might be a sport or DK weight, but I followed the pattern and it makes a very pretty herringbone texture. This was knit completely in the round. And I think I basically just knit it as long as the skein would let me. Like I said, I used a skein of Manos that I believe I was gifted from the lovely lady who cuts my hair. So I really love it. It is just a nice, warm, very simple. It's got some beautiful color and texture with this yarn. And I really love how it knit up. It's a very, very easy to wear. There are different herringbone stitch patterns, but this I did actually find easier than a different one I have previously knit as well. So I do recommend this pattern if you like the herringbone look. It's one of those stitches that would look totally different depending on what yarn you're using and how loose or tight your gauge is. So it's a fun one to play around with. Check out the herringbone cowl by Lauren Osborne. Today I am also wearing my Dubai socks by Mina Phillip, the knitting expat. This was the fourth pattern she released as part of her Around the World in Eight Socks collection in 2021. It features these beautiful cables that represent the sand dunes in Dubai. The yarn I used was from Lolo Did It's Downton Abbey Club in the colorways Lady Sybil's Dress and Drawing Room. They were knit cuff down with 20 rounds of a 2x2 rib, a German short row heel, and a rounded toe. Next, I'd like to tell you a little bit about some stash enhancement. This is actually from quite a while ago. This was the May installment of the Broadway Club by Nancy of Trilogy Yarns. I'm trying to kind of slowly go through some of my acquisitions and put in just a little bit every episode. Here's her label. This is on her plush 80% merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere base. Any guesses as to what the Broadway musical this is inspired by. Note the green and the red that might represent a little blood. This is actually Little Shop of Horrors. Here is the playbill, the artwork, and of course the famous human eating plant Audrey too. This is one of my all-time absolute favorite musicals. I love every single song. I love the story. It's so much fun. I've seen it a bunch of different times, a bunch of different ways, and it's one of my very favorite, very favorite musicals of all time. So I was excited to see this. Here it is. The label says Little Shop of Horrors. So as you can see, we've got green for Audrey too, along with the blood of all her victims. This was a really, really beautiful skein of yarn. I think it will be a pair of socks at some point. Let me know if you have any other ideas for a beautiful skein like this. It is almost Christmassy. I could almost save this and do a pretty Christmas pair of socks or a Musselboro hat or something along those lines. So I'll have to decide what to do. I will say that this base is so beautiful and I love how soft it is with that little bit of extra cashmere. Such a luxury, beautiful, nice yarn. Check out TrilogyYarn.com.
Now I'd like to tell you about my finished objects. The first finished object I'd like to show you is my latest pair of completed socks by The Cozy Knitter. This was in the colorway Regency. Beautiful self-striping skein of yarn. It's got a lighter and a darker stripe of each of these beautiful colors. It came with the cream mini that I use for the toes, heels, and cuffs. The pattern I did was the string of lights pattern, which is just a real simple pearl bump ridge by Sock Witchery. I only did it across the front of the sock and I will admit that's mostly because I forgot to continue doing it around the leg once I got to the leg. I did start these toe up. I did my normal wedge toe with Judy's Magic Cast On, knit up the foot, did a fish lips kiss heel and then continued up the leg and finished off with 10 rounds of a two by two rib in the mini as well for the cuff. I absolutely think this is one of my very favorite, well I shouldn't say that now because I really like a colorway from her I will show you soon, but this is one of my top, top cozy knitter colorways that I've ever knit with. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I love that she included a mini that was different than the color of one of the stripes. I think that makes it look extra special. And if you haven't tried the String of Lights pattern, it is one of those wonderful, very memorizable, very easy, just a little bit beyond vanilla sock patterns. And with the extra pearls, it does provide kind of a little ribbing that makes the socks fit really nicely as well. So I definitely recommend that pattern if you are looking for something that is a little more interest but not too complicated than a plain stockinette sock. This is the String of Light Socks by Sock Witchery, knit up in Regency by The Cozy Knitter. My next pair of socks is from the August 2021 Yarnable Box by Hypnotic Yarn, this colorway is called Sweet and Sour. And the pattern I did for this one was called Kaye Cables. As you can see, it's got just some really pretty twisted stitches that gives it a cabled effect. I did it across the whole front of the sock. This is a pattern by All Knit Up Designs and I think it turned out really nicely with this yarn. I did knit it cuff down. I did 20 rounds of a two by two rib for the cuff worked down the leg. I added a slip stitch heel flap and gusset and then continued down the foot before I did my rounded toe. These fit so nicely. I really love them and I think the yarn itself knit up absolutely beautifully with this stitch pattern. Not very much pooling. And I just love all these bright summery colors. This Kaye Cables pattern she actually recommends for self-striping yarn. So next time I will have to try it with a skein of self-striping yarn, but I like how it looks right here. This is the Kaye Cables pattern by Sierra of All Knit Up Designs, knit up in Sweet and Sour from the August 2021 Yarnable Box by Hypnotic Yarn. Next up is a pair of shorty socks that I cast on mid-July for Sock Week, hosted by Nitty Natty of the Love and Stitches podcast. And I did not finish them during Sock Week, but that's okay. I did cast them on and I had fun knitting with everybody and seeing what everyone was working on. And I did eventually get them finished. Obviously I have kind of a sock addiction, so I need to I need to maybe prioritize a little more. But I was happy with how these turned out. This is my shorty recipe, which is 15 rounds of a two by two rib, 15 rounds down the leg, about, for me, about 50 rounds down the foot. For this particular pair, I did a shadow wrap heel from the Sock Exploration Pattern by Denise DeSantis, also known as Earth Tones Girl and the rounded toe that I like from Kay Litton's patterns, the crazy sock lady. The yarn I used was from Sweet Mountain Yarn, their Scree sock base, which is an 80-20. This is their Time for Tea colorway, and it was a beautiful sock set. This purple mini that I used for the heels and toes did come with this beautiful variegated yarn. 
that I used as the main color. So I really love these. This was an absolute pleasure to work with and I really love the shadow wrap peel. I think this was the first time I ever did the shadow wrap peel with a contrasting color and I love how it turned out. I could not be more pleased and I'm excited to start wearing these. I will link to my Ravelry page in the description box below if you want the specifics again for my shorty recipe. But this is a pair of shorty socks, kind of with my own recipe, knit out of the T42 sock set by Sweet Mountain Crafts. Now I'd like to tell you about the pair of DK socks I finished recently. This is from the July 2022 Yarnable box. I switched to her plush DK base and I really, really love it. Let me know if you are a Yarnable subscriber, if you do their DK or their fingering. I was doing fingering for quite a while and then I decided I would try her plush DK and it is absolutely gorgeous. This colorway is called, ooh, this is really showing up very pretty in this light. This is called Picnic Basket and it is a lovely, very tonal, kind of apple -y red, very, very pretty and I love how soft it is and how it knit up. The pattern I used was the DK Weight Vanilla Sock Pattern by Kay Litton, the crazy sock lady. Very simple, I used a size three needle, which is I believe what she calls for. It is a free pattern on Ravelry that she put out last summer and it really knits up so nicely. I did 10 rounds of a two by two rib for the cuff, did the slip stitch heel flap and gusset that she recommends, and then the rounded toe. Very cozy, I love wearing these to bed at night and I'm excited to have another pair to add to my DK collection. This is the DK Weight Vanilla Sock Pattern by Kay Litton, knit up in Picnic Basket by Hypnotic Yarn from her July 2022 Yarnable box. Now I would like to tell you about a set of scrappy projects that I was able to finish in the last couple weeks. They are both from my 2020 Hugh Loco Fade Advent that I originally did the Round and Round Cowl by Kay Litton and I had a ton of yarn left over so I wanted to do a couple more projects that were a little bit scrappy that would use some more of this beautiful fade kit. First is this beautiful cowl. It is just a stockinette loop and as you can see the colors really fade nicely. It started right here went all the way through these beautiful purples, blues, greens, and then ended back here with kind of this silvery color. This is kind of my own pattern too. What I did is I cast on 90 stitches with the provisional cast on, knit 12 rounds of each color, and then I seamed it together with the Kitchener stitch. That's a simple as it gets and it is very beautiful. I have not blocked this yet, but it should fit twice around my neck or just as a longer loop. And I will be able to move it around to the different colors depending on whatever top I am wearing. It's gonna be such a staple in my cowl wardrobe. I'm super excited to be able to start wearing this now. This is on Hugh Loco's Phyllis sock, which I believe is an 80-20 base. I got her fade advent for this holiday season as well on her 7525 base. So I can't wait to see what that's gonna look like and I'll have to decide on a project like this. Let me know if you've ever had a nice fade advent or a fade kit. What kind of projects did you do with it? I'd be very curious to know, but I'm so happy with how this turned out. Love all the colors. The one tip I would say if you do something like this is be very careful with your Kitchener stitch because I did kind of do it a little bit tight and it's a little bunchy right here where I did it. I can kind of feel a little bit of a ridge, but that's okay. It'll kind of hopefully stretch out and even out. My other project I did with the same advent, so I would start by doing 12 rounds on the cowl and then I would move on to my scrappy socks. Check these out, aren't these so pretty? I started with my toe just in a dark gray Cascade Heritage that I had in stash. And then I started with the same kind of pink color that was the beginning of the advent. I did five rounds of each color. 
I did a fish lips kiss heel with the same grade, continued up the leg for five rounds, and then I did five rounds of two by two rib for the cuff using the last four colors. So it ended up being 20 rounds of a two by two rib, which is what I do like. How beautiful. I really love all these beautiful colors, how they faded together. Nicole of Hue Loco really is such an amazing dyer. And I cannot wait to start wearing these. I was good and I wove in the ends as I went. So I don't, I, all the ends are woven in. We're all good to go. They are ready to wear. This was the first pair of scrappy socks I had ever done. And I will definitely be doing more, especially with Advent leftovers and that kind of thing. I think it's so fun. And they definitely seem to be increasing in popularity doing different types of scrappy socks. This is a scrappy cowl and a pair of scrappy socks. For full details, please check out my Ravelry project pages. But they were knit up out of leftovers from Hugh Loco's 2020 Fade Advent. <laughs> Now on to my works in progress. It's actually been about a month since I've podcasted, so most of them are a half finished object, but these are the projects that I am currently working on. First is my August Desert Vista Dye Works pair for the eighth annual Desert Vista Dye Works Monthly Sock Club. I have it in my summer sock camp bag from Stolen Minutes with my Desert Vista Dye Works and Summer Sock Camp 2021 pin. I really love this bag and it's perfect for a nice pair of socks. Here is the one I am currently working on. This is another pattern by Sierra of All Knit Up Designs called Great Stones. My Summer Sock Camp 2021 Progress Keeper is from Kay the Crazy Sock Lady, her shop last summer. The colorway I am knitting with this month is Lemonade Day and it is so pretty, so bright and cheerful. So I am doing the pattern around the leg of the saw. I started these toe up with my normal wedge toe, knit up the foot, and then marked right here for my afterthought heel. Then I started doing the pattern around the whole leg. I actually only have about eight rounds left on this before I start 15 rounds of two by two rib for the cuff. So I'm very, very close on this. Here's what this beautiful yarn looks like in the cake. Very bright, very cheerful, very summery. I love it. And then here is what the first sock looked like. Here's my afterthought heel. I did not try to make these match. And as you can see, they're not going to perfectly match. We've got yellow on the bottom here and kind of a light green on the bottom of the other one. So I have successfully made fraternal twins. These do not match up and I am totally okay with that. This is the Great Stones pattern by Sierra of All Knit Up Designs, knit up in Lemonade Day by Desert Vista Dye Works. Next is my pair of socks by The Cozy Knitter that I am currently working on. I have it in my Bumblebee bag from MLD Threads on Etsy with my cute little Bumblebee Progress Keeper as a zipper pull. That was from Bump on a Hill on Etsy. Here is my sock. This is another one of the most beautiful colorways I've worked with from The Cozy Knitter. This is called Orchard. I am doing the heel toe do -si do pattern by Kay Litton, the crazy sock lady. And I am doing it toe up though. It is normally a cuff down pattern, but I decided to do it toe up and it just makes the zigzags go the opposite direction, which I'm totally fine with. My confetti cake progress keeper is from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I'm doing it on my Chowgu Red Lace 9 inch circular. On this one I have knit up the foot. I did a fish lips kiss heel with this beautiful mini that it came with. Here is what the yarn looks like in the cake. And I've knit about 20 rounds up the leg so I need to continue up the leg for a little bit more. And then I will do about 10 rounds of a 2 by 2 rib with this purple mini to finish it off. Here is what the first sock looked like. I'm very happy with how it turned out. 
So I just work it up to one of the purple stripes, did a few rounds of that stripe in the color and then added in the mini so there was a nice smooth transition. I really recommend this pattern for self-striping yarn. It is one of the most fun and beautiful patterns that you can knit with self-striping yarn. So be sure to check it out. This is the Heel Toe Do -si Do pattern by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady, knit up in Orchard by the Cozy Knitter. Next is my current pair of socks I am working on from my Yarnable subscription. This yarn was actually from September 2021. I'm kind of working through all my yarn from last year. Here's what the yarn looks like in the cake. The colorway is called Born to be Mild. And I have my sock in my grease project bag. Here's the cute little needle cozy. And then here's the project bag itself. I love grease and may Olivia Newton John rest in peace. We lost her recently, which was very sad, but she will always be Sandra D for me. But here is my sock. This is the Morning Coffee Socks by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady. I'm doing these on my Knit Picks Radiant Double Pointed Needles, which I'm really enjoying. This is the second sock, and I did 20 rounds of a one by one twisted rib, and then about three pattern repeats down the leg. I just finished the heel flap and gusset, and now I am just knitting down the foot. I decreased all my gusset stitches, and I have a little ways down the foot left to go. Here is what the first finished sock looks like. I do like the distribution of all the speckles in this yarn, but I'm not sure that it's turning out quite how I want it to. It's kind of hard to see this beautiful pattern with this yarn. This was maybe not, in retrospect, the best yarn and pattern combination, but I like it and they will fit really nicely. This is a simple knit pearl pattern that really leads to a nice kind of ribbed fitting sock. So I am looking forward to that. And like I say, then the yarn itself is distributing all its beautiful colors and speckles very nicely. So I am happy with that. I just wish I could see the pattern a little bit better. I thought it would work well with this yarn, but I was wrong. It's okay, I will finish up this second sock and knit the pattern again with a different yarn someday in the future. This S'mores Progress Keeper is from Pitter Patter Polymer on Etsy, and I always love using that in the summer. So I'm almost done with this. I just have a little bit down the foot left to go and I will do the rounded toe that she calls for in the pattern and I will have knit with yet another month of the Yarnable yarn. This is the Morning Coffee Socks by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady, knit up in Born to be Mild from the September 2021 Yarnable box by Hypnotic Yarn. My next work in progress is my share a pair socks that I am working on with my friend Helen Jo. She gave me half a skein and I gave her half a skein and we are both using them. She actually gave me a little bit of a bonus mini too, I'll show you in a second. But here is the second sock. I started with this beautiful green color, which is a Cascade Heritage. I have striped in my second color, which is Yarn Cafe Creations Biscotti Sock. I think it's her 8515, and it's in the colorway Divas. Here that is in the cake. And then I'm just striping every two rounds, keeping both yarns, just carrying them down the sock. I did 16 rounds of a two by two rib for the cuff and then continued on the leg for a little bit. I'm doing these magic loop on my Chow Goo Red Lace 32 inch circulars. And I will eventually do a slip stitch heel flap and gusset in the green color as well. Let me show you my first sock, which is a half finished object. So on this one, I started with the Divas color and then striped in the green. I did the slip stitch heel flap and turn in the Divas color and then striped back in as I was decreasing the gusset. And then for the toe, I used this 
bonus little pink mini that she threw in. This is Utopia Wisco Sock in the colorway Apple Blossom Pink, and it's so pretty, and I just thought it was kind of a fun little contrast for the toe, a little pop. So I'm excited to have this first sock done, and I will definitely use this pink mini for the toe of the second one as well. My cute little ladybug cupcake progress keeper is from Simply Serving on Etsy. I always love using this one. And I have this in my watermelon project bag from Fate's Thread, another one of my very favorite summery project bags. So I will continue down the leg of this second sock and finish it up so that I have another fun pair of stripey share a pair socks. This is a share a pair sock where I'm striping my two colors every two rounds. Knit up in Yarn Cafe Creations Biscotti Sock, Cascade Heritage, and Utopia Wisco Sock. My last pair of socks to show you is the current pair of DK socks I have been working on. I am again using my Yarnable subscription. This is my second installment of her plush DK base from her August Yarnable box. This is the colorway Straighten Your Crown. And there were all kinds of pineapple themed things in this most recent Yarnable box. This is my finished sock. It is again the DK weight vanilla sock pattern by Kay Litton, the crazy sock lady. And here I am with my second sock. I have about 10 more rounds down the leg to do. This beautiful rainbow cake progress keeper is from Simply Serving on Etsy. I am using a size 340 inch circular needle for magic loop this time. Here is this beautiful colorway wound up in a ball. So pretty, I really do love this color. And this is gonna be another very beautiful, cozy pair of sleeping socks. I'm considering gifting this to one of my friends who really likes yellow, but I might keep them for myself too. We shall see, I'll have to decide. This is the DK Weight Vanilla Sock Pattern by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady, knit up in Straighten Your Crown by Hypnotic Yarn from her August 2022 Yarnable box. My last work in progress is not a sock. This is one of the main things that I have been working on that is not a sock. It is a fingerless mitt. This is called the German Ribbed Hand Warmer from Lamb Spun, which is a local yarn store in Fort Collins, Colorado. This was designed by Larissa Breloff, and it's a beautiful broken rib pattern. I'm not sure where I got this Tropical Drink Progress Keeper, but I love it. And I'm actually basically done with this mitt. I'm using my Knitter's Pride Royale size three DPNs on this and I really just have like one more round to do and then I will bind off and then I need to pick up the thumb stitches. There is a little bit of a thumb gusset as you can see and you maintained the ribbing all throughout. I think this is going to be a really really pretty pair of fingerless mitts. This yarn is one of the house yarns from Lamb Spun. It is an alpaca and Stellina sport weight blend that is very beautiful. I'm really enjoying this and I'm looking forward to casting on the second mitt. This is the German Ribbed Hand Warmers by Larissa Brela for Lamb Spun, knit up in one of their alpaca and Stellina sport weight blends. Well, I think that's about all I have for you this episode. Thank you so much for joining me and spending a little bit of time with me. I truly do appreciate it. Please don't forget to give this video a like, comment, I'd love to interact with you, and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. That would mean a whole lot to me. And as always, if you have any feedback for the podcast, you are welcome to leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram. I am at Nitty Heather on Instagram, and I always love hearing from you. But until next time, be well, be kind, and happy knitting. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.